All right. So what am I looking at here? You're looking at a WUXGA display, which is 1920 by 1200 resolution that is directly patterned. And so it's, in this case, it's a 9.6 micron pixel pitch, that's RGB, and the RGB is put down with our technology. So usually a display of this size is white with color filters, but in this case, uh, we directly pattern. So the advantage is, in this particular display, is, uh, has a uh, maximum luminance of 10,000 candela per meter squared and we've recently done one that's uh, 15,000. The advantage here though, even if you don't need that brightness, then the power consumption is approximately five times better. So this technology is what uh, will be used for many applications. The other thing to think about is, if you ask a VR company, what do you need? They'll tell you a few things. One is I want to have a uh, large field of view and no screen door effect. So eyes like yours maybe are 60 pixels per degree and mine are not as good, but uh, somewhere between 30 and 60 is good. 40 is, uh, looks pretty good to many companies. So 100 degree field of view and 40 pixels per degree, you need 4,000 resolution. So you need high resolution. The other thing though you need is high brightness. If I want 200 nits to the eye, even though it's occluded, I want 200 nits to the eye. Uh, the, every company says to us to avoid motion artifacts, what we need to do is we need to have a duty cycle of 10%. So the uh, display light is on 10% of the time, and so therefore you need 10 times higher brightness. So 200 to the eye times 10 is 2,000, and the optics are not perfect, as you know, as well as I do. And so if the optics are 20% efficient, then you need five times that 2,000, you get to 10. Every company we, with whom we spoke has to be 10 or greater. Some applications, like you can imagine, need to get even higher uh, brightness. And in that case, we're doing a project uh, there's a group paying us two and a half million dollars to develop even brighter. We're doing, a, for example, a tandem on direct patterning, and instead of 15,000, maybe 30,000. And instead of the 10,000, this one will go to 20. So that doubles the brightness. So everything you've heard a white with color filter company say they can do, we can do as well. And we're ahead today, and we'll stay ahead. So things like micro lens arrays, micro cavities, etc., we can do that too. Uh, how does it feel to be ahead of everybody else? Well, it feels very good, but uh, do not relax ever, because this industry goes forward like mad, and we are not relaxing. That's why I just told you we're, we did 15,000 nits, and we're looking to do a uh, tandem with that, and that'll be uh, near and 30. And 15,000 is what goes to the eye? Or there's all the optics well, that take if, stuff away? If you would like it to go to your eye, you can look directly at the display and it will do that. But uh, yeah, remember I said there's two things you have to do. One of them is you need a duty cycle, like 10%. And the other thing you need to do is you need to put an optic in front of it because I want a wide field of view and magnify the display. As soon as I do that, then I have uh, much less brightness coming out of the display, but that's why I need it that bright. And uh, in this case, I, oh, one other thing. In this case, we can satisfy the brightness needed for the optic, the brightness needed for the duty cycle, but there's one other thing. So we had a company interested in the uh, VR. They uh, had us design a 4,000 resolution display. And when that company talked to us, they said, I don't only want the brightness for the uh, duty cycle and the optics. I want, when you're looking at a beach scene, for example, and there's a piece of the beach that is brightly lit by the sun, I want you to feel it. This has to be an immersive view. And our displays are the ones that can do that. Uh, so this, the stuff that you have that's very high prof professional for certain commercial professional markets uh, is you also make it available that could potentially be consumer? Oh, well, yes, we would in have this particular technology. Uh, I don't want to get too technical on you, but this technology is okay uh, to be uh, 
used outside the United States. I think that's what you're talking about, you know, a commercial application. We've often to talked about mass production partner. You know, of course, of our uh, relationship now with the uh, agreement with Samsung. That's not closed yet, of course, but uh, that's uh, a one way to get to mass production. The other thing that uh, our facility now, the uh, we have a grant of $39 million that uh, the equipment's uh, going in, and this equipment will be able to mass produce at our volume scale, direct patterning and direct patterning with tandem. And that will give uh, prototypes for consumers, not uh, millions per month that consumers will need, and it will also give uh, all we need for the other customers that we have. All right. So, so that's the the highest performance you have here at the booth. Oh, that one is yes. Yeah. So let let me have a a look. Wow. Yeah, that's in the booth, and it's only running at three thousand nits. Is my right. memory serves me correctly. We do have the fifteen thousand in a in a room, but uh, so performance. All right. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, how does your technology compare with some of the things that are happening in micro LED uh, or the backlit technologies? You're just going to be superior? Well, I, I think the thing you have to realize is that micro LED, I would assume that they will be in things like, well, they went from jumbotrons, right, to TVs. I think that's going to occur first. And then it's much easier to do with, you can have larger LEDs and you're have a, you can have a much bigger gap between the sub-pixels. And then maybe cell phones. And, but these guys have very small sub-pixels, right? In this, this particular one, it's 9.6 micron and there are three sub-pixels in there. So when the sub-pixels are very small, the efficiency of micro LED goes uh, down. So you got to solve that problem, and you have to solve the manufacturing problem. And I'm sure you'll hear some people say, hey, we got it done, but it's not there. Can you describe your company? Like, how does it work? Like, the engineer figure this out and make it happen and everything. It seems oh, very we, we do have uh, a group futuristic, that, advanced yes, we technology. Yes, we do have a uh, group that work on next generation technology both on the, uh, the OLED side and the, uh, how, how are you gonna manufacture this OLED? Uh, we have a large group of uh, engineers and scientists who have, have put this together. And we also have designed the back planes ourselves. So here, the display week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.